guys, it's Rachel. So each week I get a ton of requests to do various different tutorials, but by far the most requested tutorial that I get is for looks from the Vampire Diaries. So this week I decided to do a look for Catherine Pierce, and this look in particular came from an episode way back in season two, I think it was episode seven, and it was where they went to the masquerade ball. And I have a picture here, I will put links in the bottom bar below um, to a picture so you guys can check out what I'm trying to recreate, but it looks kind of like this, sorry, you're not going to be able to see that very well in the reflect reflection. But basically it is just a very quite simple eye, it uses a really light colour on the lid and then a very dark matte brown colour in the crease and then some really bright red lips and then we have sort of a very kind of almost 60s style beehive look head style which I think is really really cute and I think this look would be perfect for um, a school dance or even a prom if your prom is more um, is not overly dressy if it's a little bit more I guess cocktail themed then I think this look would be perfect for that kind of style and it is quite simple to recreate it doesn't require a lot of different products and a lot of the items I use you could definitely find dupes in your own makeup collection I will have a list of the exact products that I use in the bottom bar below and I may show them on screen as well but I do think this is one of those kind of looks where you can use what you have and make it look very very similar so that is it from me. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this tutorial and if you have any requests for any other makeup tutorials from The Vampire Diaries or for any other TV show that you've been loving at the moment. But other than that, let's jump into the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start by applying a foundation to our face. I'm actually going to be using a BB cream since that's kind of what I'm testing at the moment. And Catherine has very flawless, very natural skin. It's not too matte, it's not too dewy, but at the same time, it just looks like it's perfect and natural and unfortunately, I don't have that kind of skin naturally. So I'm going to use a BB cream because it gives a sort of natural finish and then I will use a concealer just to conceal any extra blemishes that I have. But you guys can use whatever is your current favourite foundation that will work perfectly. Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of concealer underneath my eyes and on any blemishes that I have. And again, I'm just going to blend that in with my finger. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of powder with a kabuki brush just to my T-zone, just to mattify any parts of my skin that may get a little bit oily throughout the day. Okay, so we're going to move on to the eyes and we're going to particularly start with eyebrows because Catherine or Nina Dobrev has quite dark, quite defined eyebrows. I'm actually quite envious of her eyebrows. They're really, really good. They're just a nice thickness. They just sort of start off thick and then go out to a thin point that comes down a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to take an angle brush and a brown eyeshadow or eyebrow powder and just start filling in my eyebrows slightly just using very light, very natural strokes. I'm actually going to start here, just create a more of a square end, and then slowly bring it back. So for eyes, Catherine has quite a light shade on the lid and then quite a dark, quite defined crease. So I'm going to start off by applying an antique gold colored eyeshadow base. I'm just going to apply this all over the lid with my finger. Next I'm going to take a flat eyeshadow brush and a shade that's fairly similar to my skin tone, just a light creamy colour, and I'm just going to apply this all over the lid. Next I'm going to take a dark chocolate brown colour on a small, quite dense crease brush because we don't want our crease colour to be to spread out. We want it quite cut. So I'm going to take a little bit of that on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to start by applying it just into the crease, kind of just where we'd want the point of our eyeshadow to be. I'm blending it through to about two thirds away across the eye. And then I'm also going to bring that line down to where the lash line is. Basically, you want to create a little triangle kind of shape. I'm 
Right now you want to blend that colour sort of inwards, not so much outwards. We want to try and keep the colour quite concentrated, but blend it in with that lighter shade on our eyelid. And just slowly pick up colour as you need it, just to really get that colour concentrated in this outer part of the eye. Once you have that colour placed generally where you would like it to be, we're going to blend it out, take a slightly fluffier crease brush and a light brown colour, just a few shades darker than your skin tone. Take a little bit of that on the tip of the brush and just use that to blend out the line between where the highlight colour would be and where the dark shadow has been placed. Just blend it out lightly. Not too much because we want to keep a fair bit of that definition. Once you've got that colour blended out to where you want it to be, we're going to go in with a stubby push liner brush and just get a little bit of that dark chocolate brown colour. And we're just going to use this to line or define our upper lash line. So just press the colour into the lashes. We're also going to use this brush to bring a little bit of the colour underneath the lower lash line. Then to further define our eyes, I'm going to use a black pencil liner to line my upper waterline and then I'm going to use a skin coloured pencil just to line the lower waterline just to open up our eyes a little bit more. Next I'm going to curl my lashes and apply a couple of coats of black mascara. To finish up this look I'm going to apply some Ardell False Eyelashes. So that completes Catherine's eye look. Let's zoom out and do the rest of the face. So at the ball, Catherine doesn't seem to be wearing any blush, but she is wearing a little bit of bronzer. So I'm just going to take a light coloured bronzer on a fluffy brush and just apply it to the lower part of my cheekbone and then sort of blend it up into my temples a little bit. And then for lips, Catherine is wearing some quite bold red lips. It's kind of hard to tell what colour red it is. In certain scenes when it's lighter, it seems like quite a bright red, but then there's a lot of dark lighting in the show, and there are times where it seems like a really deep, almost burgundy red. So I'm just going to use a red. Just use whatever red is flattering to you, but I am going to use a couple of different products just to create a long-lasting red lip. So my first tip for a long-lasting red lip is to start with a lip stain. So I'm going to use a Revlon Red Lip Stain. And I'm just going to apply this all over my lips. Now the good thing about a lip stain is that you can bring it right in to the inner lip without having to worry about it getting on your teeth. And this is good because you avoid that funny sort of look that you can get when you wear red lipstick where you have bright red and then all of a sudden you have like your light pink lip colour. So you can bring the stain in quite far. Next I'm going to line my lips with a red lip liner. I'm actually going to then fill in a little bit of my lips with the lip liner also. This will help the lipstick or the lip colour last longer. And of course, stop it from feathering into the rest of your lips. And then last but not least, I'm going to finish off with a slightly cool toned but true red lipstick. So that completes Catherine's makeup look for the masquerade ball. So let's move on to hair. So for the hair part of this Catherine Pierce tutorial, I've had to move you guys into my bathroom because that is the only place I can find where I think I'll be able to film this and hopefully you'll be able to see it. But unfortunately the lighting is pretty bad so we'll just have to work 
around that. But to start this hair tutorial, we're going to prep our hair. So I'm going to spray a little bit of dry shampoo into the roots of my hair. Now this is just going to add a little bit of texture to our hair, which is going to help when we're trying to tease it and get that extra volume. So just work that through with your fingers and then give your hair a brush because you want to get out as much of the tangles that you can before we start. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of volume powder. I'm just going to get a little bit of this onto the tips of my fingers and just work it into the sort of front sections of my hair, into the roots. Don't put the powder away because we are going to use it again later. You could also use like a volumizing mousse or even like a one of those volumizing sprays, just something to help give a little bit of extra volume to the roots of our hair. Okay. So now that we've prepped our hair, as with any hairstyle, you're going to start by sectioning a little bit. So Catherine's part is off center slightly, it's actually to the right hand side and that's where my hair naturally parts, so that's where I'm going to do my part, but you could also do it on the opposite side. Whatever it works for your hair naturally is going to make it easiest for you. We just want to make it sort of slightly off center, just around I guess where the the color of your eye starts, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be dead straight, and it also should slightly angle back towards the center because that's what Catherine's did in the photo that I'm working off. So just go back center, and you want to go back about two and a bit inches. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, make it slightly messy. You don't even really have to use a comb if you don't want to, you can just use your finger. But just sort of make a part about this far back, I would say. Okay, so once you have your part, what you want to do is you want to take the hair from about just above your temple up to where the part ends, so about, like I said, two and a half inches back. And you just want to run your fingers together till you get a section kind of like this. So you just want that bit of hair. And the way that you can tell if you've got sort of the right this section is just Hold it back a little bit, and this bit will be what frames our sort of beehive or our. So you just want it like here, sort of like that. So once you have that section out, you just want to tie it off with a small hair tie or clip, and then repeat the same process on the other side. Once you have those two pieces sectioned out, then you then want to take again your fingers from the just above the temple of your head and drag them all the way back around into the center of your hair and then just pull up all that section. This is the section that we're going to work with first. So just twist it on the top of your head and clip it out of the way for now. Just like so. We're going to look a little bit funny, but that's okay. We'll work around it. And then what you want to do is take all the hair that's left. This is the bit that's going to be left out and we'll straighten it later. And you just want to pull it back into a neat little ponytail out of the way. So just kind of like that. Okay, so once it's done, you want to take the top part out and you just want to brush it back a little bit just to get out any knots that we may have put in by clipping it up. And then I'm going to actually explain what I'm going to do first because I'm going to tip my head forward. I'm going to brush my head forward and put a little bit of that volumizing powder just into the roots of my hair, just at the back here, because this is the bit that we're going to actually tease to make our little beehive, which hopefully will look a little bit like that when we're done. And what we're going to do is slowly take each section of hair up and then tease it. And I'm going to use like a little ball bristle brush like this because I find that this gives like the most volume because it really messes up the hair. So we'll spray a little bit of hairspray into each section, tease it and then flip it forward. So I'm going to start with that now.
Okay, so once you're up to that last section, instead of using the ball bristle brush, I'm actually going to use just a comb because this won't mess up the hair as much. Once you have your general beehive going on, just use a comb and just brush the top layer back slightly. And then what you want to do is take some bobby pins, pull the hair back, and just bobby pin it in the center of the hair, just in this general area here. Now, depending on how much hair you have, that will depend on how many bobby pins you use. Try and keep them as neat as possible, but we will have some more hair that we'll brush back, and we can use that to neaten up the bobby pins later on and cover them up. Now, once you have your little beehive going on, you can brush it back a little bit. You can also use the comb to give it a little bit of extra lift, bringing it forward. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the side pieces. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the comb again and just back comb the side of it and then I'm going to section it again and back comb this bit just so we get some volume in these bits as well. And then what you're going to do is just slowly sweep them back to the side and then pin them over the top of where you pinned the bobby pins for the first section. And repeat the same on the other side. Okay, so once your hair is straightened, just as a final finishing touch, I'm going to add a little bit of hair oil, just a tiny little bit, onto my fingers and then rub it together and then just smooth it over the ends of my hair just to give my hair a little bit of that extra shine that Nina de Brave or Catherine's has. And then that is pretty much it. Like I said, it is, this hairstyle, while it does take a little bit of time just for the teasing and stuff, is quite simple. So this is the finished look. I'll step back so you guys can see it. You can make the bun or the poof or the beehive, whatever you like to call it, as high as you want. And then this is just what the back looks like. Overall, I think it is a really, really super cute hairstyle. So that's it for my Vampire Diaries Catherine Pierce inspired hair and makeup tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you did like this video and would like to see more from me, please subscribe so you don't miss any new videos coming very soon. Other than that, I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye.